Uh, I don't think so, brother. Oh yeah, this is sick. I got this. Dude, this is so fun. This is cool. Well, howdy. Welcome back to Adventure in Art. My name is Ben Staley, your resident talking head. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I recently made a music video using a set of Atlas Orion anamorphic prime lenses and the Panasonic Lumix S1H. Let's get into this. Okay, let's cut and Mostly I'm a filmmaker, although on this channel you see a lot of photography because that's what I do in my free time for fun mostly. But uh, early on in my career when I was learning how to shoot, learning how to light, I did a lot of music videos. A lot of small market, low budget, non-budget, experimental type stuff. And this type of shooting is something I still love today. Yes! It's difficult. You're often under a time crunch, you have a limited resources, but your creativity has to be dialed up to the max. And I actually like that. You have to solve problems, you have to think on your feet, you have to come up with creative solutions, and you have to deliver. And I like that pressure, and I like that creative freedom that you get from those kinds of projects. I met Sarah when I went to her apartment to photograph her boyfriend, who is also an actor. And I actually photographed the two of them together in their house. While I was doing the shoot, Sarah put on her recent album that she had just finished, and I was kind of blown away by it. I thought it was super cool music. And when I was leaving, I just said, hey, if you ever want to make a video for one of these songs, just reach out. And you know what? A few months later, she did. Fortuitously, around the same time, Panasonic reached out to me and asked if I would like to try out this little package they had with these four Atlas Orion lenses and a couple S1H bodies. And I said, heck yeah, I would love to try those out. These are cinema grade lenses they're going to require a sizable investment if you want to own them i think this package of four lenses together probably costs over thirty thousand dollars so i was pretty stoked to get my hands on these and i couldn't wait to shoot with them the camera's going to be low we're going to pull this to the side that's what i'm thinking okay. so you, what you can do is pull that off the stand put it center point it up at the you know and then we'll we'll tweak it once i get the camera up mm -hmm. and i get her in there and then this guy will just move it, we'll just kind of pull it out and we'll, we'll still backlight it. Yeah. Nice, I need some water. We don't get super technical here on the channel. We talk a lot about creativity and a lot about inspiration and about process, but uh, I'm gonna share a few details about anamorphic lenses in case you don't know. I guess in a nutshell, anamorphic lenses are most easily characterized by the very distinct flares that they have. So if you shine a light into an anamorphic lens, you get this crazy horizontal blue streak. And you can see that in a lot of films that have used anamorphic lenses. The other thing that characterizes anamorphic lenses is an oval bokeh. The thing anamorphic lenses do is through their optics, they actually squeeze more information into a frame. So you end up with this weird compressed looking frame. And then when you get into post-production, you have to de-squeeze it. And what you get is this super widescreen, very cinematic looking image. These Orion lenses are a 2X squeeze. That means whatever you shoot, you have to stretch it 200% to get the proper orientation. Now these are super 35 lenses. I'm shooting with the, the S1H, which is a full frame camera. So I use a setting that just captures the center of the sensor as smaller than the entire sensor so that I have full coverage with these lenses. So then I end up with this three by two frame and in post-production, I squish it down, stretch it out, and this is what you get. And I would, um, you know, don't, don't jump around to like, stay kind of in that area. But do whatever. I'm just going to try and keep up with you. So we should take this off, maybe? Um, yeah, maybe so. What do you, I mean, are you going to spin and stuff? Who knows? Then I like your attitude. Great. Perfect. <laughs> oh, <it's good. laughs> 
<laughs> I've wanted to shoot at Chandler Studios. I use this place every chance I get. You've seen it on the channel before. I've done photo shoots here. This is where I shot the SEAL video. I love this place. It's just got this kind of down home vibe and it's a very useful utilitarian space. I can do a lot of things and I love the big white psych. I wanted to do a real clean, a uh, colorful vibe for this video, but our resources are limited. We have a very small crew, a couple of Sarah's friends, a couple of my friends. I brought Danny and I brought my friend Kel Vaughn. You've seen him on the channel before. Danny's shooting all the BTS video. That was her main job. Uh, and I just had a couple lights. Had uh, some of these uh, Nanlite Pavo tubes, which are actually lighting me behind. I love these things. They run on batteries. You can plug them into the wall. You can dial in the color, the temperature, the brightness. These things are awesome. I used a couple of these to light the psych. I can dial in the temperature. And then I used another one for a key light on Sarah. I also used a couple of hobo lights that I've had in the kit recently. And particularly, I used the one hobo light on a stand to give Sarah a nice backlight. I wanted this kind of really dramatic uh Halo-y backlight. That's so cool. Yeah. Thanks. It's just, it's like old film Hollywood. Look, when I'm doing something like this, I make a very detailed plan. I have a shot list. Uh, I know which parts of the video I'm shooting, what setups and this and that. But I'm also open to going off script. I'm open to improvisation. I'm hoping that I have some happy accidents. I'm hoping some things don't work out and I have to come up with creative solutions. That's often where you get the best ideas. So it's a mix of very focused planning and complete improvisation and making things up on the fly. And that's how I like to work. Reach out to it. A big visual component of this video is I wanted to project a performance from Sarah onto the wall and have her basically in two different places on the frame at one time. So to do that, I had to pre-shoot some of the material. That's the vibe. Yeah. We shot that material at Sarah's apartment with a Super 8 camera. And then once the film was processed, we put it on a computer and I projected it onto the wall so that the projection is singing part of the song. Sarah in the frame as I'm filming her for the video is singing part of the song. We're bouncing back and forth. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> good, good, good cut. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. That was fucking amazing. Take cool. a breather. Cool. Normally with lenses like this, they're designed for cine use. They're not typically a solo operator lens. Like you will have typically a crew, a first AC pulling focus. I'm doing all that myself. I'm using my thumb to rack back and forth and focus. I am the kind of shooter that likes to be looking through the lens. I like a viewfinder. I have this little small HD five inch monitor that I've had for years. And I have this EVF attachment that I've never used before, but I busted it out, dusted it off, and hooked it up to this rig, and it worked pretty good. It allowed me to see critical focus. I could punch in on the image, and I could make sure that I was keeping Sarah in focus. It's very difficult with anamorphic lenses, and I'm shooting these mostly wide open. They're an F2, so there's a very shallow depth of field. Fun, fun stuff. Sick. That was awesome. Thank you, Kel. I've got Kel Vaughn in the background. Uh, bouncing this light up and down just to change the nature of the flare. Again, the flares are a really cool part of anamorphic lenses and one of the main reasons that people are drawn to them today. Now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get a little wider. Okay. That was great. We just reset here. Now getting wider with a hundred millimeter means you just have to back up. And when you're in a small studio, that means you gotta back up into the kitchen. I think music videos are a great way to learn. They're a great way to try new techniques. They're a way to experiment with camera moves and lighting and editing and all that stuff. Music videos are like film school in a day. And I suggest that you try and make some or get involved with some or help your friends out. Make some music videos, even if you don't ever show anyone, even if, even if it's just for a song that you really like, go out and try and make a video to it. You're gonna learn. 
You don't have to have big fancy anamorphic lenses. You don't have to have high-end cameras. Your creativity is defined by your limitations. Do not let your lack of resources get in the way. Just get creative, lean into it. Yeah, right to me. Kel, pick up the projector and put her mouth right next to her face, please. Just to the left of her face. Yes, right there, right there. I got called away to Africa on a job and I wasn't able to finish editing the video in the time frame that Sarah wanted. So she actually finished editing the video with a friend of hers and they released it. In my own time, on a much longer time frame, I did a director's cut and I put that on my website. So the link is down below if you wanna see my director's cut of this video. I will link Sarah's version down there as well. This is great, Sarah, no, you're perfect. Thanks for showing up, folks. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you. We'll see you again real soon. Get out there and make something. It's gonna happen, yes. Okay, and we can roll it. Mm -hmm. Which oh. part of the Passover dance? So it's rolling, there's just no music, but you're looking at yourself back here.